Africa is home. Come home and invest in Africa and let Africa invest in you. Africans for Africans, man, let's do something. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, right here in Accra. I'm still in Accra, yeah? You know what I found? I was actually busy looking for apartment for my friends coming from different African countries. Uh, we have a contest tomorrow. Because Liberia is a Nigeria will cook. Nigeria will cook. Yeah. Just here. Just here. Just here. Just here. The father's chef. Who's going to cook the Nigerian job? Oh, who is that representative? Please, I'll come and try the Nigerian job. Ah! <laughs> and listen, I was looking for something moderate, something that my friends can afford because, you know, I'm not so rich, so all my friends are not so rich. <laughs> Whenever I become rich, I think I'll, I'll be surrounding myself with people who really have money. And I came across this apartment. You know, I was like, wow. I never knew something like this actually exists in here. But it does. And uh, you know what? When I'm looking for apartment, I'm actually looking for apartment that is owned by an African so that the money can stay in Africa. That's how we should be, bro. That's how and, we be. you know, that's how I got to know you. My name is Watamaya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. Nice and uh, my job is to travel around Africa to celebrate Africans doing something on the continent. And I think I am here to celebrate you today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wode. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you. Are you from Ghana? No, I am actually Nigerian by fatherhood. My mother is from Sierra Leone. Have you my been... wife is Ghanaian. Hey! So I'm um, three countries, Charlie. Have you been to Sierra Leone before? I just came last week. Last week? Yeah. How was Sierra Leone? Beautiful. Beautiful yeah. country. Salon na heaven. Salon na we country. <laughs> it's a bit of crew. I mean, a crew boy. Hey! Ebo. Okay. <laughs> and which part of Nigeria are you from? I'm Yoruba. I'm from Oshun State. In Yoruba. Oh, wow. Yeah, Sorry, I, I, would have, I would have called you an Yoruba demon, but I don't think you're a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Kilo Shelley. Kibado. <laughs> ah, Bawane. Yes, yeah, yes, I'm here. Uh, yeah. It's good to see you. Thank you. All right. So, I mean, I just want to have a quick conversation with you. First oh. of all, I mean, born by a Nigeria and Sierra Leone parent. Yeah. What, what brought you to Ghana then? My wife brought me to Ghana. Ever since then, I've taken roots in Ghana as well. You, you met your wife in Ghana? No, we met in England. I live in England. I'm a lawyer in London. Oh, okay. My name is Deji Adejobi. I own a law firm in England called Enon and Co Solicitors. Uh, we defend criminals and sue the police. And we do a bit of immigration and every kind of law we do. Uh, then I think um, a lot of my audience needs you because I, I think majority of my audience live in the UK and the US. Oh, So really? if you are in the UK, see, but this one I think I need a commission. If you're living in the no UK problem. and looking for a lawyer, I think I got you a lawyer. Yes. But you need to pay me a commission before you speak to him. All right. I think um, I'll put your details so that they'll reach out yes, to you. Yes, it's Enon and Co. Solicitors. And it's, uh, the telephone number is 0207-281-2123. 0207-281-2123. He's giving you his number so that I won't get a commission. No, no, no. You'll still get your... <laughs> 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 You still get your position, man. Yeah. <laughs> right, it, it, it's good to see you. So, yes, I yes. mean, living in England, and why don't you need to invest in England? Decided to invest in Ghana. Oh, it's important that we don't forget where we are from. I am a very Afrocentric person, and as far as I'm concerned, everything on, every everything, comes from Africa, and it's important that every African, wherever you are, you must come home and put something down, because our people need us. There is a lot of brain drain, power drain resource drain, but we should start bringing them back. And COVID has done a good thing. It's crystallized people's <laughs> minds about the importance of, you know, knowing what the, what the important things are. Mm. And I reckon a lot of people will now mm. start taking stock. And it was a beautiful thing. We had the year of the return. Yeah. A couple of years back. 2019. And we have to keep returning, people. We have to keep returning. Don't forget Africa. This is where it's at. And we should, still keep, we should keep coming back. This is hopefully going to be the first of many investments. We hope. To I mean, this is your Accra. first ever investment. Yes, in Accra. Oh, okay. Um, but in Nigeria, we're looking to do salon big things, bigger things. I mean, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. As my Muslim brothers. Say. Yeah, because I'm wearing my. Uh, yes. How do you call it? What's, I don't even know the name of the clothing. I think oh, it's long kaftan. Long kaftan. Yeah. yeah, I got. I went to Somalia and I fell in love with this kind this of clothing. Is beautiful. I've been wearing it since. You know, now you've invested in Ghana. Do you yes. think it's worth it to invest in Ghana? Beautiful place to invest in. Ghana is central. 
between, uh, between Nigeria and the rest of the West. And everywhere, Ghana is just the center, in my view, of the world. I, um, I think it's very, very important uh, we can invest everywhere in Africa. I plan to go to Tanzania next time, and hopefully Rwanda afterwards, especially countries where there are strong African leaders doing big things for us. <laughs> yeah, people who are making me proud. I want to go there and do something there. Why Tanzania? Well, we, have you heard of uh, the bulldozer? The bulldozer is no more. Well, he's been, he inspired me. I never knew anything about Tanzania until the bulldozer came and went. And for me, he made a mark, as is uh, the current Rwandan leader. They are not, they are not all perfect, but we could, we've seen a lot worse. And as far as I'm concerned, there are people out there to be looked at. And where we can glean positive things from them, we should. And much more importantly, be proud of Africa. This is where it's at. Let's talk about your apartment before I ask you my next question. Yes. Now, um, how many stories are this? Um, we have eight apartments in here and two rooftops. Uh, so three, four stories now, actually. And um, there are two bedroom apartments each way. And then we have um, a large studio here on the rooftop and a small studio as well. Are you selling them? Well, there are a couple for sale. You make the right offer, uh, we, we will sell. At the moment, at this moment in time, they are mainly for Airbnb okay. and a couple for long-term rents. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. The price part of it, though, is the pool apartment. If you, if you want to take a look down here, uh -huh. it's actually a one-bedroom deluxe penthouse mm. on the ground floor by the pool. Yeah. It's so far been our bestseller and our hotcake. Yeah. And hey, nothing, nothing is, is set in stone. Mm. If uh, the right of us come, we will sell. I want to know, yeah, do you believe that Africa is the place of opportunities? Absolutely. Africa is where everything happens. And what makes it quite crystal clear to me was traveling on the plains. You will, you'll be surprised to find, my friend, that there is more white people on the plane between Accra and Sierra Leone than there are black people. There were more white people on the queue when I landed in Lagos from, from here than black people on the plane, despite how horrible Nigeria airport was. I'm sorry, Lagos airport was a disaster <laughs> for me. And um, if they can do something about it, it would be nice. How so it, was, it was a horrible place, a horrible experience. It took me five minutes from the plane to where I was waiting for my COVID test when I landed back in Kotoka Airport, which was amazing. Meanwhile, it took me at least one hour, 40 minutes from checking in to get to where to sit down to wait for the plane in Maurice Al Mohamed Airport. So Nigerian leaders, we've got to do something, man. Ghana, has set the, they, have set the, they have set the tone. We have to step up. We cannot continue like this, I'm afraid. Well, Sorry, I've had to, I've had to give no, that No, you have to, you have to. So you to you gave it to the extent that you even forgot to tell me the answer to, to my question. question. <laughs> you see, there you go. <laughs> Do you think that there are opportunities in Africa? I mean, I mean, like investing in Africa is worth it. I believe so. I believe um, the returns on your opportunities, I, they go a long, a long, long way than mm. they, they do go mm. in, um, in, in, in Europe and elsewhere. Mm. What I certainly will get for 100 pounds in Accra is a lot more than what I will get for 100 pounds in London, where I'm based. That's for sure. That's, that's to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And there are so many things here because many of the natural resources are just here. Mm. And I find that a lot more Africans are living it. Whereas the other people who are not Africans are coming, coming to here. take it and use it. And then we are coming to now buy things. In, uh, went to Malcolm, he's an Indian guy. Who is, uh, we have to queue to pay Lebanese man. We have to queue to pay, uh, sorry if I sound controversial. But no, I think no. Africans for Africans, man, let's do something. Okay, we've got to do something. <laughs> so, so which means that you definitely have a message for Africans. Yes, Africa is home. Come home and invest in Africa. And let Africa invest in you. There are things I can do here today that I can never do in England. Can but, you explain that? And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's not all bad, it's, by it's the way. A, yeah, it's not all bad. But, you know, like me, I, I have a problem. My problem is like, all the time we see people that are not from Africa mm. investing in Africa. But yes. something that we are not seeing 
It's Africans from different African countries. I'm so happy to talk to you because you're born in Nigeria. You're investing in Accra. Don't you think that we need more inter-trading among Africans? Yes. Well, I hope uh, this, uh, what's it called? African, African free trade, trade. Free trade zone. I think it's an indication of where mm. we should be going. Whether mm. we'll get there is another thing. I think we need to invest in Africa. We all should be pan-Africanists and believe and bring Africa up. I think COVID has potentially changed the dynamics of things. If we know how to play this, it could actually work well in our favor. Um, we need to come home. And whatever keeps us over there that makes us have to go back, fine, go back, but don't forget home. Mm. Because there are things happening here. Wow. What are the major problems that you face as an African investing in Africa? Major problems as an African investing in Africa. Number one is the shock of the change that a, perhaps because I've been away for such a long time. So adapting to the African scenario again is always, for me, a, a struggle. And I say that specifically with reference to going back to Nigeria. It's not the same in Accra, I'm afraid, because it's a bit, things are a bit easier in Accra. Things are not as bad. Mm. And for me, the corruption is, I'm sorry, it's a bit of a sad thing because the corruption is terrible. Uh, it's been the major, major, the most, the most difficult challenge. Uh, things that should be straightforward, they make it difficult for no, no reason at all. So for me, it's the corruption. If we can deal with the corruption, the rest should fall into place. It's corruption. That, that's why we don't have, we have doom some. It's corruption, certainly in certain countries where we don't have enough water supply or power supply. It's corruption, you know, that's made people so, in fact, desensitized to such an extent that they don't even expect much from the government. Certainly in Nigeria, I find people just get on with getting, providing their own electricity, providing their own water, providing their own security, providing their own, you know, they get their communities because they can't rely on the police, they can't rely on the water board, they can't rely on, you know, the electricity board. Everybody just gets on with doing their own things. So they don't even care. And sadly, they still go and vote for people who are going to not do, this, do anything about it. So I don't, I don't understand that. I really don't. Uh, don't you think this is one of the major reasons why the diaspora, most of them don't want to return back? Yeah, a lot of people are scared, actually. I mean, traveling, ho traveling home with my family for this holiday, I've got, had people say, ah, DJ, you are brave, oh. you're going to Accra, you're going to Africa. A few friends say, actually, you're going to Accra, that's even better. At least you're not going to Niger. I mean, that's sad. That's sad. Nigeria is supposed to be one of the, the, the richest country in Africa, but things are just all over the place. I'm sorry, that's how I see it. Which means that when it comes to you, I think you have a problem with leadership in Africa. I have a big problem with leadership in Africa. And crucially, I have a big, bigger problem with followership in Africa. It's, you know, that, um, that Stalin analogy that when he approached the political bureau, pulling off the chicken's feathers, on, and the chicken was spewing blood, and um, the chicken was, you know, shivering. And yet, after I finished making the chicken naked, put the chicken on the floor, and started throwing corn, and the chicken started following it. It's like, that's exactly how African leaders have made African voters. They, they dehumanize you, and still make you dependent on them. And you're happy to be following these guys. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a tragedy, a real tragedy. So it's a problem with leadership and it's a problem with followership. If only people can see beyond the next bread and butter and say, nah, man, the guy I'm hailing is the guy who is eating my money, tiffing my money and putting me down. Then maybe things can change. What do you think will unite Africans someday? I think education and the youths, the, the young ones. So we need the, you guys, the younger people to get up, man and start communicating. And social media is going to work wonders. You guys are, I can see networking going on. I can see a few things happening. I see hope. I'm very hopeful. I see the bottle or the glass has been half full, not half empty, because there's resilience in African youths. There's resilience that I see on people's faces that tells me, nah, there's got to be a way. I'm sort of hoping that I'll still be alive when these things happen. But I see African youths coming together and changing the dynamics. That's the way I see things. It will happen. If not now, it will happen soon. So, I promise you. Mm -hmm. I see that happening. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? 
Oh, change every leader that we've had. <laughs> God forgive me. That's how I feel. I feel the leaders have let us down, man. We have let the, 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 the young ones down. If we can change the leadership that we've had in the past, apart from, obviously, a notable few, uh, the, obviously, the Osage for himself and people like that. But I'm sorry, 90% uh, of African leaders have not done a good job, I'm afraid. You're a lawyer. I'm a solicitor. I defend people. Would you, would you love to, I mean, be a president of your country someday? <sighs> have you ever thought of it? Never, actually. I've never thought about it. <laughs> I just want to be a president of my own house for now. I make a good job of that for now. And you never know where that will take you. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. And I really appreciate your time. You're very welcome, Woody. Thank you. Thank I'm you. grateful. Thank take you. Care.